Okay. Um, in this video, I'm going to run through how I've edited uh, this uh, long exposure uh, star trail image. Now, uh, this was shot with the D800, um, 14 to 24, 14 mil, um, and an F8. Uh, the exposure was two hours and 50 minutes. It's actually my first uh, star trail image. Uh, I didn't want to use uh, stacked uh, exposures um, as everything has suggested that it would leave gaps uh, in my star trails. Um, so this is basically going to cover two techniques, one of which is exposure blending, um, where basically I'm going to process the foreground and process the sky uh, and blend them into a sing single image. Uh, and the other part of it, which I think is essential, um, as I'm going to make some heavy manipulations to both of these, um, is to remove the uh, the noise, particularly uh, kind of hot, hot and warm pixels. Uh, Lightroom itself is supposed to remove uh, this noise from the image, uh, but I, I found that after the process, uh, processing had been done, that wasn't the case. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to create two virtual copies uh, of the, the, the base image. Um, and I'm going to process, like I said, one for the sky, uh, one for the foreground. Uh, rather than do all of the processing, I'm just going to apply some snapshots, which I've edited earlier and, and, and made them to look quite, quite nice. Um, so first of all, if I apply the, the sky uh, snapshot, it'll take a little while for it to, to load. Uh, unfortunately, while recording uh, the, the screen, everything goes a little bit more slowly. Uh, but here we go. So this is this is the sky. Uh, it's obviously quite a lot darker. I've heavily increased uh, contrast saturation and so on to bring out the star trails. Um, there are a few things to point out. If you zoom in, um, first of all, you know you can start to see some of these like pink hot pixels, uh, which which show up. Um, and also, there is some sensor uh, dust. Let's see if I can find some of this on here. These, these kind of darker spots. Um, unfortunately, I haven't found really a way to clean these up. Um, so the only really important thing here, I think, is to add remove chromatic aberration uh, at this stage. Uh, and the reason that I've done that on both the, the foreground uh, and the sky is to make creating the layer mask uh, a little bit more easy. Uh, if, if we had you know, some color shifting, um, it might be a little more tricky for Lightroom to, to create this mask between you know, the horizon and the sky. So that's my sky image. Now if we go to the foreground, again, I'll apply my pre-created snapshots. And I actually think this, uh, as it stands, is, is actually quite a nice image, but it's not exactly what I had in mind. Um, and again, now you can really see some of the, uh, the dust spots in the sky as well when it's exposed like this. Uh, more importantly, though, if we zoom in on this foreground, um, there's a lot of uh, sensor noise uh, going on. Um, so we're going to cover blending these two together and getting rid of some but not all of this, this dark noise. So I've selected both of the, the two the two virtual copies I've created. Um, and I'm going to right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. This will take a little while to load. Um, in the meantime, I, I have two main references for these techniques. Uh, the first is exposure blending using Photoshop CS6. Uh, that's a YouTube video which I'll link to. Uh, and it's a really good tutorial that, that goes into a lot more detail than, than I'm able to go into. I'm actually very new to uh, Photoshop, having already installed it a few days ago. Um, and the other is Dust Scratches with Darken, and that's a JMG Galleries uh, blog post. Um, and yeah, but both of them together I found to be very useful. Uh, and this is probably the process that I will use for most of these images in the future. Okay, so we've got the foreground image loaded.
Okay, and the background's also loaded uh, now. So you'll notice, I guess this is perhaps just fluke, but the, the, the sky image is the first layer. Um, and that's the way it should be. If it's not the case, just, just drag them uh, and create them in the right order. So to create the, uh, the mask, we're going to use the quick select tool from the left-hand panel. Uh, we start in the top left-hand corner and just drag down. It's just kind of magically selecting, uh, I guess, based on some kind of contrast algorithm. Uh, and we want to just mask off the uh, foreground. So I'll just go slowly along this. Okay, and now just continue to fill in all of the sky. So eventually we have everything selected. Great. Okay. So we've, we've got that selected off. Now from this, we're going to create a new layer mask and that's in the bottom right hand uh, control panel, the add layer mask. So we add that and pretty much immediately we start to see something very close to what I want my final image to be. Um, the glaringly obvious uh, thing here is that as I zoom in, we have some haloing. Uh, around the foreground and the background. Now, the the video tutorial that I would say I will link to um, covers this in a lot more detail. Um, the way that I'm going to fix this um, applies really only to, to kind of large objects. For this, it's perfect, but if it was a tree branch sticking up, uh, the next technique wouldn't work. It's also worth pointing out that on the, the large rock on the left, um, I've tried in Lightroom when I was posting this, uh, and I did it with a, a local adjustment brush, not to go too close to, you know, to the top of it, to try and, you know, increase uh, or, or decrease the brightness. So it's still quite dark up there. And that's important because when we blend the foreground uh, and the sky together, we don't want them to look unrealistic. And I'm just going to quickly show you an earlier version. Um, here, I went a little bit too close to, um, to, to this border, and I think it's not that it looks terrible, but I think the later version is, is much better. Okay, so if we switch back. Now, what we want to do is we want to take this layer mask, uh, right click, and refine. Um, so I'm going to set my radius as 5 pixels and I'm going to shift the edge. And what that means is it's going to push it more into the foreground. And I'm going to just push this up a bit. Okay, and you can see that as soon as that is finished applying, the, um, the haloing effect has almost disappeared. Let's zoom in a bit. But yeah, you can see here now, there's still a little, little halo. Maybe we can turn this a little more. Um, I think that's actually looks about the same to me, but it, it's much more natural now. If I go to show original, you know, the difference between those is, is night and day. We've, we've got a much more naturally blended image here. And that's okay because, you know, the sky is obviously quite dark, but so are these borders. They're supposed to be dark. Um, and we don't get that jarring edge. Uh, so let's keep that. That looks great. Um, there we go. So this is this is practically the final image. Um, now, if I zoom in on on the sky up here, here's some of this hot hot pixel noise I was talking about. Um, so the next technique is from the dust and scratches with darken, uh, and I'm going to copy or duplicate this layer. And then to the top layer, I notice I've got the image selected, not the layer mask. I'm going to use filter, 
noise dust and scratches. Um, okay, so the settings that it's picked, uh, the ones that I used previously for the, the foreground, and you'll notice that it's considered some of these star trails to be scratches, which isn't you know un uh, unreasonable. Uh, it just means that we need to tweak uh, these settings a bit more. Uh, and I found that, that one pixel uh, with a threshold of 140 actually works very well for my image. Unfortunately, it's not possible to get rid of all of the noise, uh, but I think that this is a good compromise, and obviously I can go up and clean any uh, particularly jarring ones uh, later on. So if I just show you the difference there, I think that's a, a good uh, you know, good application of, of that. If we you know reduce the threshold, we start to see gaps in the star trails. I'll, I'll just turn it down a bit. And you see, we're starting to see some, some gaps, and they look a bit more dotted, which is absolutely not what I want. So I'm going to turn that back up to 140, um, and I'll apply that. Now, the, the blog entry that I read suggested turning uh, the, the layer mask type to darken. Uh, that works fine, and for the flash of the sky, it doesn't to make too much difference. But when it comes to the foreground, pin light, I found to be significantly better. So I'm going to apply pin light uh, here as well. Um, and you know, I think that's that's pretty, pretty good. So now let's go down to foreground. Yeah, there's, there's a lot more noise here. Um, and actually the, the filters are a much better job here. So again, we select the, the, the foreground layer. We're going to do the same process, duplicate layer. Oops. Find default, uh, and again, same thing: filter, noise, dust and scratches. And here, I'm going to use the settings used previously, which is three for the radius and seventy for the threshold. And pretty much instantly, you can see the difference between uh, before and after. A lot of that noise has now practically gone. Not everything, um, but it's 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 a, a big improvement. I'd like to point out now, um, if we zoom in on, on this particular rock here, what this filter has done is it, it's removed a lot of the detail, both you know highlight and shadow detail. Um, and that's why we've created the layer, and that's where we're going to set the, uh, the blend type uh, to be pin lights, which I mentioned earlier. So let's apply that. Okay, and now let's go with, with Darken, which is the uh, one that was recommended in the blog post. This is, this is much better. We've brought back a lot of the shadow detail. But over here in the center of the, uh, the crop, we still see some of this strange pixelation. And this is where I found that pin light does a much better job. We've, we've preserved this kind of shadow detail, and we've got a lot better uh, highlight detail. So I'm now very happy with that. Um, I'll still need to go through and you know, clean up a little bit more by hand, uh, but as it stands, that's that's excellent. So I'm gonna I'm gonna save that. And I can now return to Lightroom. And we have the final TIFF uh, image imported into Lightroom. Um, at this point, we could enable profile corrections. Um, I guess we could have done that earlier. Uh, it doesn't really make a great difference. We could, you know, sharpen the image. We've sharpened that previously. We don't need to. Um, but again, you have a lot of flexibility in the way that you you do things. Um, okay, that's pretty much my tutorial over. Uh, I hope it was helpful. Um, yeah, get in touch if you have, well, preferably any suggestions for me of how to do this better. Um, but yeah, I hope it was helpful. Thanks.